So I wanted to ask you uh, another thing um, that I think is extremely interesting, and that is about uh, technological singularity. And I wanted to, uh, to ask you to explain briefly what it is and where we are now and what the perspectives are for the near future and for the far future. Sure. Um, human civilization was born uh, 10,000 years ago, uh, more or less, with uh, the invention of agriculture where um, little but important changes enabled us to produce excess food that increased the population and uh, increased our opportunity to look around and ask new questions. As well as, together with our invention of writing, uh, these questions and the answers we started to find could be spread and could be better understood by larger and larger groups. The progressive accumulation of knowledge and new tools and the tools that are based on the tools themselves uh, is, is not something that is, is uh, uh, happening just now. It is not something that is the invention of the 21st or 20th century. It has been going on for a long, long time. What is different is that uh, while the effects of these cumulative changes have been invisible within the lifetime of a single person before, since about a couple of hundred years, change has been happening fast enough for individuals to realize that it was actually going on. If I were uh, a, uh, a farmer in the Middle Ages uh, and I, I, I worked the land to grow the grain uh, and feed my family and pay the taxes and uh, go to church and uh, respect uh, the, uh, the local prince or king, uh, I would have had no way of um, realizing that there was change going on around me. And my only hope would be in the afterlife. I would cling on my belief that if I did certain things, I would be living a better life after I was dead. The opportunity of making life better for one's children became something more than not just a fable, because in the fables, children always leave their families and then they change their own lives by marrying a princess or something, but that concretely a parent could do something that made the life of their children better became apparent or started to become apparent a couple of hundred years ago. About a hundred years ago, what happened is that people started to say, wait a minute, if I do something, things can become better for my own life, not only the life of my children. My own life can be made better by something that I do, such as, for example, study, get a university degree, or move to a city, or, or something like that. And today, what we have is that, at least theoretically, everybody has the power as individuals to do almost whatever they want in their personal lives, in their professional careers, in, in they can have multiple professional um, trajectories, one after the other, um, and the, the, the choices are, are enormous. If you believe that the underlying forces of 
combining knowledge in new and new solutions is not just a happenstance and that it will continue the acceleration of change is going to continue in the future as well technological singularity is the moment in time when the tools of change themselves become independent from the human actors and specifically when what we call artificial intelligence um, computer systems software systems that can analyze and solve problems on their own become feasible the reason why is because one of the interesting set of problems that these systems are going to be able to analyze understand and reinterpret better and better are going to be themselves their capability for understanding themselves introspection and redesigning the way they work is going to be far greater than our attempts of understanding how our mind works how our emotions work how we can find and organize societies that are more equal more just and they will do it per definition without us they will do it on their own the cycle of analysis and re-implementation is going to continue at an accelerated pace and the effects on the world of these accelerating cycles are hard to predict so the word singularity is there to represent that it is very difficult some say it is impossible others say it is hard but it's very very difficult to predict how the world is going to look like how the world is going to work after that moment in time so uh, where do you think we are now exactly in this um, kind of process well there are people who say it will never happen that it is an illusion uh, that either because of some uh, physical or technological uh, limit that we hit or because inherently um, it is it is beyond what uh, what we can uh, achieve in terms of organizing complex systems we will not be able to, to design intelligent uh, uh, autonomous systems um, I, I I think they are wrong the phenomenon of intelligence is certainly uh, very complex and uh, uh, it is certainly not something that we fully understand today but it doesn't have anything that is inherently impossible to understand it is an expression of the laws of the universe and self-organizing systems whether they are stars that burn or galaxies that swirl or ecosystems that uh, are made up of thousands of uh, different species uh, intelligence is also a phenomenon that we can an analyze and and understand and then reinterpret there were people who said we couldn't build airplanes there were people who said we couldn't go uh, and and travel in space and just as they were wrong people who say we, we cannot build intelligent systems uh, are going to be uh, proven wrong just as airplanes don't resemble birds artificial intelligences are not going to resemble humans uh, when we interact 
we will um, find ways to understand each other. So there will be speaking artificial intelligences that we can talk to and they will respond. Um, it will be important to find constructive ways to interact. You know, when birds and airplanes interact, that is very seldom constructive. The bird dies and the airplane gets damaged or even crashes. So there are people who are already working on how to make sure that uh, these systems are, are going to uh, peacefully coexist with humans. Back to your question. Uh, the, one of the leading figures of the technological singularity thought space or movement, if you want to, to call it, is Ray Kurzweil. And his prediction is that the technological singularity will occur around 2045. Whether it is 10 years before or 10 years after, for him, uh, it doesn't very much matter. Um, he would be very surprised if we were uh, sooner and he would be also surprised if, if it would be much later. To me, it doesn't even matter if it is in 100 years later or 200 years later. Uh, the fact that uh, it occurs is going to transform uh, the universe. Just as um, when we look out today to the, uh, to the galactical plane, uh, with our telescopes, we are more and more um, clear in our understanding in a larger and larger radius that there are no technological civilizations comparable to that of uh, uh, planet Earth and humanity today. As disturbing as this knowledge is because being alone in the universe on one hand and uh, having the responsibility of preserving our planet and our civilization in order to achieve the opportunities that we have is, is huge, of course. In a thousand years, when we will look out in the universe, once the technological singularity has, has occurred, we will see a very, very different uh, world around us. That, I think that's one of the things that, um, you know, people will just have to wait and see uh, where it goes. Well, actually, um, um, billions of people are unaware of, of, of these uh, predictions and, and uh, the transformative consequences uh, that will uh, be around them if, if it does occur. Um, there are millions of people who are aware of it and are passive in, in their expecting for the good or the bad consequences that uh, will occur. But there are thousands of people uh, or even tens of thousands of people who are very actively uh, working either directly or indirectly to bring ahead the changes that are going to be the premise for uh, the singularity to, to occur. Um, if everybody were passive, then it wouldn't happen. Yeah. 